All right, here's another example of an improper integral. And again, you're going to have to learn to look for these things because, you know, maybe the instructions will say evaluate the improper integral, but chances are they'll just try to slide it in on you. Um, notice there's an infinite discontinuity at, in, at the value x equals 0. If you plug 0 into this equation, this formula, you'll get e to the 0, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And then you have e to the 0. You're getting 1 over 0. And as a general rule, if you're getting something non-zero over 0, that suggests an infinite discontinuity. So the, our problem place is at 0. So we'll break it up at 0. e to the x over e to the x minus 1. And then we'll have another integral as well from 0 to 1 of e to the x over e to the x minus 1. And maybe we'll start with the left one here first. So 0 is my problem place. That's what I'll replace with the t. And t is going to be approaching 0 from the left. If you think about it, we were going from negative 1 to 0. So now we're plugging a t somewhere in between that interval. And t would be approaching 0 from the left. So we'll have 0 from the left, e to the x over e to the x minus 1. And if we do a substitution on this problem to integrate, if we let u be e to the x, du will be e to the x dx. So really what I'm integrating, if I just turn it again into an improper integral, I'll have 1 over u du. So if I calculate the antiderivative of that, I'll get ln of u. But again, u is e to the x minus 1. And now I'll just plug my limits back in there. t is approaching 0 from the left. And we're doing this from negative 1 to t. And So let's plug all of our values in here. And again, I'm not doing anything with the right one yet. Just in case the left one happens to be um, divergent, then I'll be done in that case. So I have the limit, t approaches 0 from the left. If I plug in t, I'll get ln of e to the t minus 1. I'm running out of room here. And then when I plug in negative 1, I'll get negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. So I'll subtract off, but then I'll have the absolute value of that, which will become ln of positive 2. All right, so now comes our limit part. As t approaches 0 from the left, well, e to the t is getting close to 1. So the stuff on the inside, it's really getting close to 1 minus 1. So again, if you plug in 0, you get e to the 0 minus 1. And that's 1 minus 1. So the inside's approaching 0. But since I'm taking the absolute value of it, it'll be a number close to 0 but positive. And if you think about the graph of ln of x, recall that ln of x looks like that. And as you get close to 0, ln of x goes down to negative infinity. So this limit is actually going to turn out to be negative infinity minus ln of 2 which in this case you'll just get simply negative infinity. So I only evaluated the left side. I'm not going to worry about the right side at all. Since I get negative infinity, I can conclude that this original integral is therefore divergent. So again, just like before, if it was negative infinity to positive infinity, you'll have to break it up. If it so happens that your function has a bunch of infinite discontinuities over the interval that they give you, you'll have to break it up in a whole bunch of places and you'll get a whole bunch of integrals. Um, in general, the problems that you'll run across um, you know, will probably only have a discontinuity at the left endpoint, the right endpoint, or as in this case, somewhere in the middle. And that's pretty much uh, uh, the idea with these problems. So. Be careful with your left and your right in terms of, you know, which side t is approaching the number from. 
but other than that again you just integrate it just like normal maybe you use a u substitution maybe you have to use integration by parts maybe you have to do trig substitution um, just treat it like a definite integral and then at the end just be careful with your limits and hopefully it'll all make sense there at the end for you